welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today I'm gonna share a recipe with you that was inspired by a channel I came across yesterday. And um, I'm gonna leave the link below to that video and to his channel so you can actually go over and see this gentleman. And I don't want to um, butcher his name or his channel. The channel itself, like mine is 255 Sage, but the name of my channel is Linda's Pantry. Um, the channel is Orsara Recipes, O-R-S-A-R-A -S -S -A Recipes. And so that's how you find him, but it's um, Chef Pasquale. So anyways, uh, he's got a big heart. I watched every video yesterday <laughs> because I was kind of under the weather and um, I just needed some inspiration on what to do for our big dinner today and so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a rabbit cacciatore and saying that like he does, um, I think you guys will really like him. So I'm making rabbit cacciatore and um, all that means is hunter stew and this was rabbit that we raised and um, had in the freezer and I, I really needed to figure out what I was gonna do with it and I was gonna make chicken cacciatore in the future and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do this and so I'm not doing his recipe exactly, but I will be um, trying to uh, go along with what he did on the marinade. And so, anyways, let's stop talking. And if this inspires you to stay along, maybe give me a thumbs up somewhere along the way. Uh, go down in the description box, go to my Facebook page if you haven't already done that, if you have Facebook. Join in on that conversation and um, be aware of when I upload videos right away. And maybe go over and check out Wild Tree because you never know, I might be using some of Wild Tree's products. In fact, I know I will be. <laughs> so, that being said, let's get to this. This is a delicious Italian dish. All right, guys, come on, let's go do it. Okay, you guys, so I'm really glad you stayed along for this. This recipe, um, I'm not gonna follow it exactly, but out of the other recipes that I looked at and my recipe for chicken cacciatore, um, it, it, he had to marinate this rabbit. And I decided to follow that. And um, so what's in here is red wine, uh, rosemary, garlic, and uh, as he calls it, oh yeah, baby. And that's a hot pepper all broke up or some hot pepper flakes. Um, and if you watch his videos, he does that, oh yeah, baby. Uh, <laughs> and it just, it has made me fall in love with his channel because of his personality. So what he's got you doing is you're gonna go ahead and drain this. Now he doesn't flour this, but I like to flour just to help thicken the sauce. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that because, uh, because I don't know, because I've always done it. And so I'm gonna flour this rabbit. I'm gonna get it onto, into my Dutch oven over on the stove and I'll bring you over there when I'm browning. Okay, I'm gonna brown it really well, both sides, then I'm gonna sweat all these vegetables down and I've got, um, I have a good, oh, half a pound to a pound of mushrooms. I've got an orange bell pepper, I have a red bell pepper and a big onion all chopped up. And we wanna make sure that we uh, do that. I've got some garlic that I just, put into some olive oil that's all diced up small in the refrigerator, and I'm gonna put that in there as well. So let me bring you over to the stove and brown this up. Okay, so I've got this starting to brown, and he used olive oil down in his pan. I'm using a mixture of grapeseed oil and olive oil, just like when you use olive oil and butter so the butter doesn't burn. I'm gonna keep the olive oil from burning by using a higher smoke point grapeseed oil, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper this. And I wanna tell you that this already smells amazing. And I've got some cracked pepper that I have already pre-ground. I did it in my coffee grinder this morning just because my grinder isn't working that well and I need a fair amount of pepper in here. So this is gonna simmer and get delicious. So I'm gonna brown this on both sides, then I'm gonna remove it, and then we're gonna get moving on to the rest of this. I do want you to reserve your marinade. That's how he did it. And I wanna follow as closely as I can to his recipe. And uh, I'll bring you back when I'm a little further along. 
All right, guys. Okay, so now you can see how beautiful brown that's gotten. And I'm just going to remove it because now we go to the next step. And we want to remove the rabbit. I'm just going to put it on a paper plate here and reserve it. Nice brown color. All that fond that's on the bottom of the pan is going to equal flavor in our dish. Chicken cacciatore is one of our favorites, and I'm sure a lot of your favorites. You can make this, all it means is a hunter's stew. So you can make this with rabbit, you can make this with chicken, you could make this with quail, you name it. You can make this with almost anything you've got on hand. So I just get all of that out. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to start adding vegetables because that's what comes next is the vegetables. And I can't tell you how amazing this smells right now. It's ridiculous. And we're going to sweat these vegetables down. So I'm going to get my little scooper. Get these onions down on there. It wants to start smoking already. So I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit. Get the onions and the peppers. He didn't put peppers or mushrooms in his. Um, it's basically the tomato, but I really enjoy this in chicken cacciatore, so we're making a big batch, and it's going to be delicious. Oh my goodness. It smells amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and let these sweat a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead, and it'll help deglaze the pan, and these vegetables start giving up some of their liquid, and it looks like quite a bit right now, but it really isn't. In the scheme of things, it's going to be fine. I'm going to grab a big heaping tablespoon of garlic that I just minced up and store in olive oil in the refrigerator. And I'll be either uploading a video after this, or I've already done it, one of the two, on how I do that. And because you've got the other vegetables cooling it down, it won't it won't burn the garlic. So you want to make sure you get every bit of goodness off the bottom of that pan. Oh, does that look and smell amazing. So once these have sweat down, I'll bring you back for the next Okay step. guys, so this has had a chance to sweat these vegetables and I can turn the heat up now because I'm going to start adding some cooler items back in the pan. And uh, this just smells amazing. He said when he was in Tuscany, I believe uh, that they ate a lot of this and um, we um, actually we've raised rabbits and this is one of ours that we raised but you can also in the winter months here at least the rule of thumb is and my rule of thumb has always been growing up I was told to wait till the first hard frost and hunt them until the last hard frost and that way you don't have any worms or anything like that. Now we don't eat jackrabbits or anything like that. These are, if you're hunting, it's a cottontail rabbit, but in different parts of the country, it's different. So now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and he doesn't throw anything away. No wine gets thrown away. So this is going in here. This has got the red wine, the garlic, the rosemary, and the oh yeah, baby, <laughs> the hot peppers. And wash that dish. And that's also going to help deglaze this pan. That wine is all going to cook off. If you wanted to add extra wine, you could. And make it really, really rich. But I think I'm just going to try to stick as close to his recipe as possible. And then he has you put in plum tomatoes. And I've got a good Italian blend or Italian brand of tomatoes. I'm going to put a large, uh, it's a 35 ounce can of plum tomatoes. And he goes in there and breaks them up with his hands, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my spatula. Get all that sauce out of there. And these, these are beautiful um, tomatoes. And now look what gets to uh, braise this rabbit is this gorgeous tomato-y flavor. If you need something else to get in here and break these tomatoes up with, please, you know, feel free. 
If you wanted to add diced tomatoes, you could do that, but I just really wanted to try to replicate what he had or as close to it as possible. Since we're this was an inspired dish, I don't want to not do him justice. Anyway, so now once you do that and you bring this up to a nice uh, boil, you're going to add your rabbit and nestle that down in there and keep and go ahead and braise that. So that's what I'm going to do is add these pieces of rabbit back down into the braising liquid. And oh, I just I'm so excited. I cannot wait for this meal. Two big legs here. These hind legs are going to be the first pieces I'm sure that get Look how beautiful that is, and go ahead and get it down in that sauce so it has a chance to braise really nicely. And get that sauce right up over top. Now, if you didn't feel like you had enough sauce, add some more tomatoes. But I think this is going to be perfect. I'm going to go ahead and set this on a medium low and let it braise for a couple of hours. And I'll be back. Okay, guys. Isn't it beautiful? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I am ready. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna take this lid off and it has been simmering and just stewing and braising in that beautiful sauce that we created. And I can tell you, I've done a little bit of a taste test and the Oya baby, as he puts it, does come through. So if you don't like hot, be careful on how much. I only put uh, a couple tiny peppers, uh, maybe four, <laughs> uh, tiny dried peppers in this marinade, but it's not too hot. And you can see now it's a sauce. It's not, it's not soupy, it's not watery. It's just broken down just perfect. The rabbit is ready, and if this was chicken, it would be absolutely amazing. So I definitely want to get this over some fettuccine. I've got some breadsticks and a Caesar salad that I'm going to serve this with, and I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of what that really looks like when you get in there and, oh, boy, doesn't that look good. It's just a really thick sauce, and the Italians call this a gravy, and it, it has the consistency of a gravy or a thick sauce, in my opinion. So I can see why they say that. And now we're gonna serve this up. I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I have an unveiling like I've had. I haven't ever had an unveiling like this. So I'm gonna tell you this, seriously, is one of the best sauces and I want you to look at this. I hope that you can see how thick and delicious this sauce got. I've simmered this now for four hours and that's really what I thought it should take. These, This wasn't a, a young rabbit necessarily um, but even if you were doing chicken you want to simmer it and Take the time to make the sauce amazing because that's what's going to make this. So, that being said, I'm going to get in here. I have my linguine down. I have homemade breadsticks. I, I do have a another salad plate. Ooh, look at it. So we're just going to put a little front shoulder there and I'm going to take going to take this whole thing. I'm going to take a little piece of tenderloin. Mm. Oh, oh my gosh. And you know that we're singing right now. And then we want some of this sauce. And the Italians call this gravy and it, it really it has a gravy consistency. It's got the tomatoes and peppers and mushrooms and I don't know. I've tasted this throughout this cook and I can tell you it's um, 
absolutely spectacular. And all I'm going to do that they don't really do traditionally, and I'm going to bring you in for a close-up of my plate because, you know, that's how I am. Okay, we don't want you too close, but we want you close enough to know that that's phenomenal. And I'm going to put a little Parmigiano Reggiano down over the top because who doesn't want that? Oh my gosh. Even though that's not really what um, is traditional, it's all right. I'm going to take it to the next level. And now, I'm trying to get the knife out here and give you a taste test. Mm. Let's see if I can get you closer. Ooh. Doesn't that look good? So I've got these homemade breadsticks, and this is from my pizza dough recipe. Let me taste that. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That's phenomenal. I don't know who you are, but it's really good. Okay, so now I want to taste this, and I want to give you a real feel for how this rabbit or chicken would taste. And you know, for those of you that think I am bunny hunting, I'm not. Um, but to be self-reliant, oh, you know what? They come into the play. So here I've got a piece of the rabbit. I've got some sauce and a red pepper. And then I'm going to Go ahead and grab some of this linguine. Oh, nice. And once we get that on our plate, if we can do that, <laughs> we'll uh, have a taste. Okay. Well, I can't seem to get the linguine on there, so here we go. There we go. Okay. Onward and upward. Mm. Mm. Wow. For those of you that have never tried rabbit, I highly recommend it because you really can't tell the difference between that and chicken and it's so much better for you than chicken. It doesn't have all that fat content and um, it's delicious. Anyways, I hope this inspires you to maybe step outside the box, try a new recipe. This would be fabulous for a chicken cacciatore or any kind of cacciatore you want to do and that's really a hunter stew. But I combined all the ingredients and I hope you go over and visit my new friend and um, yeah most of all I hope you come back and see me next time and if you like this give me a thumbs up if you really like it post it on your Facebook page because it was delicious and I know all your friends will love it and then mm. alright guys God bless